call our regular session to order. We've already uh, taken roll uh, as we moved into the closed session, so we'll reopen the session now. And, uh, the agenda says that Steve Petty will uh, give the invocation tonight. He is moving, as you all, I think, know, leaving Lompoc for a new assignment. And uh, uh, with the moving vans in front of his house, uh, he was unable to make it down here tonight. We'll ask uh, uh, Council Member Durham to lead us in an invocation. Please rise. We pray tonight, O oh Lord, for your guidance, wisdom, and strength. We pray that you will protect our servicemen and women who give us the rights to live free and also to worship you. We pray that you would protect our local law enforcement, fire, personnel, as well as our loved ones watching at home. Please watch over our community during these times of economic stress. These things that we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a report on action taken in closed session. We concluded uh, one of the items, which is just an ongoing uh, review of, of a, a situation and no action was taken. Uh, the other item uh, we will take up after this meeting. And after that uh, closed session, we'll come back if there is anything to report, if there's anybody still here at that hour of the night uh, to, he to hear it. Um, presentations presented elsewhere. Uh, on the 8th of June, I was uh, pleased to present a proclamation to uh, the, the police chief and the police officers that were running the torch uh, for the Special Olympics Law Enforcement uh, Torch Run Day. And uh, Tony, you want to talk about your, your, the, your presentation? Which one? Dr. Dr. Gossman? Yes. Well, it was my honor to, uh, on June 5th, um, the mayor was unable to be there because he had so many grandkids that one of them eventually graduated. So I was given the honor. Uh, and it was an honor because I've known uh, the doctor for, well, since we've moved here. I mean, most of you have known him or seen him. Uh, we held the uh, presentation at uh, the new hospital. It was a great dinner, a fantastic turnout. And Patricia and, and uh, Dr. Guzman, or Galsman was just odd. Um, in fact, when um, I read the last line of the, pro uh, the uh, proclamation for, uh, stating that the mayor of Lompoc, Mike Zeminski, uh, proclaims June 5th uh, as uh, Dr. Uh, Galsman's day in Lompoc, uh, his wife just broke down and, and cried. And, uh, of course, it didn't take but about a second before the doctor was doing the same thing. So it, it, was, it was a great evening, and uh, I thank you for allowing me to do that for you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Durham. City Administrator, Executive Director's uh, status report, Ms. Barcelona. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, uh, there's one item on tonight's status report. Um, Management Services Director Brad Wilkie reports he received from the HDL company their fourth quarter 2009 analysis of Lompoc's uh, sales tax information compiled from actual receipt data received from the State Board of Equalization. Uh, at the City Council mid-year budget workshop on February 6, 2009, Mr. Wilkie reported the projection for full year Sales tax revenues was 3,045,149. Uh, 
However, HDL reports the 2009 fourth quarter Lombok sales tax revenues the same full year are 3043111 Thus, the negative variance on the sales tax compared with the city budget is now projected to be 100329 versus 98291 reported at the February workshop, a difference of 2038 cents. While the HDL update notes overall fourth quarter sales tax were down 5.7%, the bright spots in Lompoc compared to prior year's fourth quarter results include Lompoc sales tax for service stations up 16.3% compared to a state sales tax up 7%. And uh, sales tax for new car sales, Lompoc up 13.7% compared to state of 1.1%. Restaurants without alcohol up 5.7% compared to state down 2.3%. And sales tax for family apparel up 30% 30.3% uh, uh, compared to the state up 9.4%. Additionally, uh, while yet uh, not received, HDL just published the first quarter 2010 raw sales tax information indicating Lompoc sales tax are up just under 4% from last year's first quarter, uh, January through March, with overall state sales up uh, half a percent over the comparable period this year, uh, last year, I'm sorry. And I'm also pleased to announce that the Lompoc Redevelopment Agency tax allocation bonds were sold today, yielding a more favorable proceed level with a lower um, net interest rate than anticipated. And uh, Mr. Wilkie is available if you have questions regarding this information. Thank you. Is there any further information on this? Yeah, I have a question, Mr. Wilkie. Uh, in a previous conversation, you said that the uh, uh, bond person was saying we were going to uh, save uh, some money because we had to wait a year on that. Did you get a figure on that? It is a little hard to guess what the rates were, uh, but the, he did give me some general numbers for had we done this borrowing back in back in the fall of 2008 the interest rates probably would have been around 9% and had we done the um, borrowing this time last year it would have been close to 7% mm. and the borrowing rate that we got today was slightly under 6% oh. so so that yeah that will some savings, so I guess yeah. you know, it, it was fate why we had to wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Lingle. Uh, Mr. Wilkie, can you put that approximately 1% into a dollar figure? Uh, that's hard to do, but what I can put in a, in a dollar figure is, is from the expectation that we had about a month ago internally to today's sale, we got an additional approximately $400,000 that we were able to put into bond proceeds for projects than we otherwise would have had done at the expectation of the interest rate a month ago. So okay. we've, we're better off by about $400,000 than we thought we would be the, at this point in time. Okay, thank you. I'd like to just one, make one, one general comment for the, for the public. Uh, one of the big ways that, and, and we're watching cities, we're watching county governments, we're watching the state government, and we all know that every one of them is, uh, is deep in, uh, uh, at the bottom of the pool, <laughs> looking up through, through an awful lot of red ink. Um, one of the easiest ways for our government to get in trouble is to overestimate the income. At the state level, we saw when they approved the budget last year, they, uh, 
the state budget was approved and, quote, balanced because the state expected the federal government to give it uh, large amounts of federal dollars. The state expected the Indian tribes to give the state large numbers of, of dollars. Uh, and because they were projecting high income, they didn't cut the spending the way they should. And then at the end of the year, no big surprise, there's a, there's a major deficit. Uh, here, when we went through our budget exercise over the last two years, we have insisted on the most realistic projections as possible, uh, even pessimistic projections for income so that we wouldn't be faced with a major deficit as the budget year moved on. We are on target. When you, when you, when you talk, talk about missing the sales tax income uh, by four, $4,000 or $2,000, $2, um, uh, we're, we're really right on target uh, with our estimates, and that helps us to manage our finances. The staff owes, is, is, is deserving of an, of an awful lot of credit uh, for, uh, uh, for assisting the council with uh, and following the, the directions of the council with respect to that. So the report tonight is, is good news. It would have been great news if we'd have had a couple hundred thousand dollars that we weren't expecting, but uh, the fact that we're on target was, uh, was to me, good news because we, uh, we, we did pass a, a realistic budget. Are there any other staff requests and announcements tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to council or agency requests uh, and, and announcements. Mr. Lingle. Um, just a request. It, sometime in the future, I noticed in the um, agenda tonight we're talking about Charlotte's Web, and I haven't heard anything about that recently. I was wondering if sometime at some future meeting in maybe the near future, we could just get an update possibly from um, the library director on where Charlotte's Web is. So, and I guess with that, I'll need a second for her to for her to prepare the report. Do we have a, a second? I'll second that. Second and, and the order. Let's put it on put it on the agenda. Any other comments? I have. Uh, I have Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, there has been a lot of, um, not a lot, a little bit of discussion about uh, our Old Town Friday Night Old Town Market being uh, canceled for this year. It was very interesting in the newspaper that uh, the people that were interviewed had no idea it was going on, and it, we've been in operations for 10 years. So I don't know where people have been for the past 10 years. It's a long time. Um, I did write a letter to um, the editor. It, it's probably too long. I don't know if Mr. Portner will publish it or not. But I did talk about the past 10 years and the few people that have put that, that on. Uh, Alice Milligan had the idea. We're very, uh, you know, we all jumped on the bandwagon. We uh, worked very hard for 10 years on Friday nights to make that a success. Um, the reason it just... I'm, I think it's probably just the economic times right now. We could not get enough volunteers to run it. Uh, a lot of us uh, have been working for 10 years and are getting older, so uh, some of us uh, had to uh, you know, back off a little bit on the committee. We did not have uh, food vendors who came up and they needed to uh, follow some very stringent um, health department rules, uh, which, make, which makes it difficult, but they could have done it. Uh, we did not have uh, anybody, too many business vendors that wanted to participate this year. So I'm hoping next year we'll be able to uh, get rolling again, and I would encourage the um, public to get involved in this, uh, in the committee. We, uh, we've worked hard, and I, I would hate to see it uh, not come back next year. But um, it, um, one of the rumors I heard was it was the city's fault and the city had nothing to do with this. It has to do with the times and lack of interest on the community. So I would really like to see uh, people get fired up again like we did 10 years ago and call the chamber and volunteer to help get this going again. The people that came down on Friday nights enjoy it, enjoyed it a lot. 
and it was a good social time. We uh, had a good time with it. Um, and I, in the letter I wrote, um, one of my fondest memories was uh, the first time I met Jonathan Wild. He was standing on a street corner on South H Street, singing his heart out. So um, a lot of memories like that. And I, I, I just hope that we can uh, pick it up and get it going again next year. Thank you. Okay, I have a couple of, uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, um, last month, the city council authorized our electric department to participate in the purchase of, and the, uh, uh, the development of a new generating plant up near Lodi. Um, we committed with the purchase of gas and the, and the purchase of the facility to, to I, I would guess, more than $60 million of uh, city expense over the, the life of that project to, to assure us reliable, uh, quite clean, the amount of uh, carbon that's being put in the air um, and, and uh, quite uh, cheap electricity um, for, for as far as I can remember. One of the things that, uh, one of the things that we authorized that night was the staff to uh, purchase an additional quantity or additional percentage of that project uh, in the event someone else backed out. Well, one of, the, one of the small cities that was going to be a participant did back out uh, the allocation of that city was uh, sought after by every other member. Everybody else wanted a slightly bigger piece of it. We took a, a piece that was one-tenth of one percent. Is it greater than, than we discussed that night? I, is it about that uh, right, Ron? Um, so it's a little bit bigger than it was approved, but at the, night, at the time we approved it, we authorized staff to, uh, to acquire some additional part if it should be available. Uh, the major parts of that have been awarded. The estimate was, uh, was, that was presented to us is pretty reasonable, but the framework uh, for the, the, uh, the plant itself, not the generators or the boilers, um, was out to bid, and the bids were opened yesterday, and the low bid was about uh, $8 million higher uh, than what NCPA had budgeted. It's being analyzed right now, and Thursday there will be a commission meeting uh, in Sacramento to review and determine the award of the contract. I expect that we will go ahead. But um, it, to me, it was a little bit of a bad sign that a major project came in above the architect's estimate because we're also holding our breath for the Dewey Center bid opening, which is coming up in two weeks. And we're hoping that uh, when that bid, those bids are opening, it will be within the funds that are available and funds budgeted. and. Uh, we keep hearing that the building contractors are uh, are hungry and are sharpening their pencil, but uh, uh, this one was a, I hope, just a unique situation. Um, the uh, final comment I have is a uh, a comment on the um, Proposition 16, the initiative. I don't know whether we can't campaign for it ahead of time, but I I do want to commend the people of Lompoc that voted against that. I do want to commend the people of California. It really it really, really makes me feel good about our democracy when um, uh, the company that tried to cement their monopoly spent over $52 million trying to convince people to vote yes on that issue, and the cities that were opposed to it through just personal contributions of city officials were able to raise about $60,000. So 52 million versus 60,000, but we did have editorials, the Lompoc Record, Santa Barbara paper, the newspapers up and down the state urged people to vote no, uh, labeled it for a, as a power grab, and the people of the state apparently read and understood the initiative. They turned it down. So I, I feel good about our political process because of that, and I'm certainly tickled that that thing went down to defeat. Uh, those are the, the only comments that I had for tonight. Mr. Mayor, maybe, maybe one more comment. Obviously, it's, it should be obvious why we have this attire on tonight, but you may want to. Oh, okay. A lot of, lot of events this week. Uh, we're, we have this attire on because if we were sitting here naked, everybody would get up and leave. But uh, uh, it is our last meeting before the Flower Festival. Um, 
we can we can promise you we can promise you uh, uh, great entertainment. We can promise you great arts and crafts. We can promise you great food. We can promise a great carnival. We can almost promise great weather. It's all it's it's always uh, uh, a, a little bit iffy, uh, but uh, um, compared to other parts of the country, what was it? Arkansas, ten and a half inches of rain. Uh, so it will be a, be a great weekend, week after next. Starts off this Saturday night with the uh, uh, coronation of the Queen. I've watched the young ladies that are all competing for that uh, since the night they were introduced and the competition opened. Uh, they were very, very much diamonds in the rough. I think some of them had never worn high heels uh, in, their, in their lives, and, and they will be... Um, they will be uh, beautiful, and they will all do a great job. And whoever selected will be a great representative of the of the city of Lompoc. So, go ahead. He can promise you everything except maybe flowers for the flower yeah. festival. The chamber keeps a a list of uh, flower fields that are available. So there there are a few flower fields out there. So we're still in there for the flower festival. Mr. Durham. Well, personally, personally, I think we ought to make a motion that this is our attire from here on out. Um, <laughs> that I'm, they like it instead of the old, you know, tight and tie, right? There you go. We do work for them. Should we make a motion also that we comb our hair? Oh, ouch. I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on to uh, oral communication. You have five minutes uh, to speak on any item of city business. If you want to talk on uh, something that's on the agenda, we prefer you wait till that item comes up. We'll, with the exception of the consent calendar, we'll give you a chance to speak when that item comes up. Uh, if you want to speak now and don't want to wait till the end of the evening, uh, you, you can on any item, and uh, we'll ask you to line up, uh, fill out a speaker's card, watch the lights. Is there anyone who would like to speak during oral communication? John Lawrence, City of Lompoc, Evening Mayor and City Council members. Uh, the City Council election in November. We have heard no further comment my, on my suggestion to have the Mayor's term of office the same as other members of the Council. Remember that although the Mayor represents a city, that he has only one vote the same as other members of the Council. Why should anybody seeking re-election to Mayor be required to go through the process twice as often as other members of the council. They are subjected to campaigning and the expense twice as often as other city, city council members. Uh, trailer and RV parking on city streets. We believe that the proposal to issue permits is an excellent idea, but these permits should be for parking in front of their own property. Why should their neighbors or other people in the area be inconvenienced by having trailers and RVs parked in front of the non-owner's property? Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Mr. Lawrence. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, Joyce Howard, 10 Lompoc. I just uh, wanted to invite all of the council and people watching at home and in the audience to our second forum tomorrow night on sustainable communities. Um, as you remember, last month I came and talked to you about the forum that Santa Barbara County Action Network was doing on stuff. And stuff means the hundreds of tons of stuff that we create every day and what are we doing with it and what are we going to do with it. And um, tomorrow night we have a representative from the city of Lompoc and a representative from the county of Santa Barbara talking about what both the city and county is doing in terms of recycling, what's on the horizon, and then we're going to have a general discussion about new best practices. Um, at last month's um, workshop, we had a representative who's traveled quite a bit in Europe, and he talked about what um, they're doing in Europe, and they have some really creative, innovative ideas. And so I would encourage you to come. It, I think it'll be very interesting. And most importantly, I think the issue is very important to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Howerton. Ms. Howerton, a time and place? Sorry. 
7 o'clock, uh, Lompoc Library. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak at this time? Seeing so no one rise, we'll close the oral communications, bring the uh, uh, action back to the City Council. We have a consent calendar with seven items on it. Uh, they're all routine. They include uh, uh, approve the Police Department Special Olympics Car Show and Cruise Night, uh, approve renewal of the agreement with the County of Santa Barbara for Animal Control Services, uh, approve the Clean Air Express uh, lease agreement between the City of Lompoc and the City of Santa Maria, adopt a resolution approval of the annual maintenance plan, uh, to adopt uh, unclaimed property resolution, and uh, um, approval of the minutes and the expenditures for the last uh, period. Uh, what is the wishes of the Council with respect to the consent calendar? Mayor, I make a motion that we accept the consent cal calendar as it is. We have a motion. I'll second it. Second. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, let's cast our vote. That passes unanimously. Appointments. We have two appointments to unexpired terms on the Youth Commission. Uh, we have two candidates that have stepped forward. What are the wishes of the council on the appointments? Is there, let me ask if uh, uh, if anyone, is, if any of the uh, intended of uh, candidates are here that might want to be recognized. Uh, okay. Um, what's the wishes of the council on the on the uh, appointment to the youth commission? Mr. Mayor, I move that we accept the nominations and appointments of uh, Edith Vargas and Maribel. <laughs> I did that, didn't See, I? I avoid the. I avoid yes, the I'll, I will give it a shot. <laughs> Anguiano. Very good. Mr. Mayor, I uh, second that motion. Been moved and seconded. Let's cast our vote. And that uh, passes unanimously with Ms. Martin absent. Uh, we have one more appointment tonight. The, uh, we had a vacancy on the Parks and Recreation Commission when Mr. Darrell Tullis moved out of town. Um, I'm happy to submit. Uh, th this is the uh, appointment. Uh, um, on this commission, each council member nominates one person, and I'm, I'm happy to present the uh, uh, nomination tonight of Arlen Sechrist. Arlen and I have known each other. We were in JCs together way back in when? The 60s. Old time. Old time in the 60s. So before the arch? No, the arch was there. Uh, what are the wishes of the council and the nomination for? I'll make the, no I'll, I'll, I'll nominate. Well, Mr. Mayor, I, you know, I've known Mr. Seacrest for many years, too, and we've had a lot of good conversations, and I know that his heart's in the right place when it comes to the city of Lompoc. So I second your nomination, and I think he's a qualified person. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, see no other comments. Let's vote. I should acknowledge Ar Arlen. You want to stand and wave? All right, I'll stand. Stand. Thank you all. <laughs> okay, thank you. Next item is a public hearing. It's a hearing of objections to destroy the weeds and to remove rubbish, to remove refuse and to remove dirt. Is there any objection? <laughs> uh, Battalion Chief Jeff States, summarize your report. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Like you said, I'm here to address the abatement of the weeds, the staff recommendation is that we adopt resolution 5646, para 10, ordering the fire chief to abate such nuisances as declared on May 18, 2010, by resolution 5634, para 10, in the time and manner provided by law. And they actually have a uh, updated list. Mm -hmm. Just copy Good. for everybody. There's actually only five left on the list, and I've talked to two of the property owners, and they said they would have it cleaned up before the flower festival. I'm sorry, how many? Five. Five left? Yeah. Not bad. In past years, if I remember correctly, there have been some out-of-town property owners 
who are just as happy to have the city go ahead and contract to clean it up and charge them for it uh, uh, because they don't have a presence in town. Is that is that still the case with the remaining three, or are they actually just being the re remaining three is the um, Santa Rita Hills Wine Center, and then the Coastal Riverview Terrace, which is adjacent to that property, and then the other one is the old bowling alley. And I haven't. Well, I've talked to Mr. Hutchins, but. The uh, Carlos, I haven't contacted. So I'm not sure about that one. Thank you. Are there any questions at this time of the uh, chief? Yeah, chief states, uh, we had directed these people to um, abate the weeds by May 28th. Here it is now, June 15th. So if they did not have it done, on May 28th when we had told them to, are they liable for any of these special fees and assessments because they did not have it done on the 28th until now, just in the last couple of days or even five right now? Yeah, my understanding is yes, according to the government code, that once we send the letter of abatement, we can charge them the administrative fee. Okay, and my recommendation, or my, my recommendation would be that we actually do send the, uh, collect the fees and the assessments on these. Even though they have abated them, they did not do it by that date. So that's my recommendation. We can do that if it's a council's wish. I just have to um, figure out the time and then give it to the finance department so they can figure that out. Before we, is it? Oh, I'm I can tell you to turn your light off. Oh. Everybody's always telling me to turn. Um, before we uh, take any action on that item up here, we'll ask if there's any uh, uh, one from the public that would like to speak on the item before us. Thank you, Chief. Yes, Council Mayor and Council Members, I'm not against what he's doing. The only thing I'm here to say is that somehow we're going to have to look at doing the process earlier. Uh, when we have 2,500 people coming in for a wine festival in April and we still haven't got some, and one of those properties that hadn't got the weeds down and you got them on tonight to do, somehow when you have a rain year like this, there's got to be a way to come in earlier. And, and there's, it has to be done. Because now, a task at Arrow is now looking at double shredding. And we got some in the city that's already done it four times. Mother Nature is not kind to you, but there's got to be some way that we redo the, the organ, uh, ordinance so that allows us to come in earlier, not thinking the flower festival is the main thing, it's just to get the weeds down sooner. So I think we need to look at that. Another thing I'd like to see done is that it's one agency that's doing it instead of three or four. One, if it's on private property that goes into planning and they do it, then the fire department has theirs and I think there's another agency in there. So you need to look at tying it into one agency and one person involved and get the thing cleaned up. Uh, they've done a good job what what's going on, but when you had the three that we're talking about, they should have been done a long time ago because that is the entrance to Lompoc. And uh, I don't know why Mark is, well, he spends more time in Arizona than he does here. So, but uh, anyway, I've called on him too. So I think that's the only thing. I'm not against the ordinance, I guess what it is. You may want to do sometime between now and next year, find a way to bring it in so you can come in sooner if you have a rain year. Uh, it, it's been a problem for everybody in it because we had the late rains in May. And, and Mother Nature is always a culprit because you can never get it. So that's why you got to have an ordinance that can move with whatever the weather conditions are. So that's just a suggestion. Thank you, Mr. Holmdahl. Any other, anyone else like to speak on the issue? John Lawrence, City of Lompoc. The fire department should have the authority to cite property owners do not keep their property cleaned up. If the owners do not clean up their property, the fire department should be authorized to have the property cleaned up by a contractor and the owner presented a bill for the expense. The city council should not even be involved in such a mundane, mundane matter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. 
Good evening, <laughs> Arlen Seacrest. I find that there's quite a few vacant lots and parcels in Long Polk that really need to get after. Uh, we can start on Olive Avenue and O Street, where we used to have that substation. It was mowed down once, but it's all back up now. And then if you go down Olive Avenue to V Street, portion right next to the avenue is mowed, but the alley side is not unless the neighborhood's taking care of it. There's a couple spots that they've really done a good job on. But right at the corner of O and Olive in that house, it's up over the fence and it's now brown, so it's a fire hazard. And as you go on down to V Street, there's several areas down there that still need to be really worked on, uh, especially on the alley sides against the fence line. It's all grown up. I'm thinking that perhaps the city needs to do like the railroad does. When they spray, the weeds don't grow. <laughs> I don't know what they use, but we need to get some of them and spray them alleyways and get rid of the weeds, unless those people are, you know, planting flowers and one thing they're out there. That's my comment. And the other thing is, you folks should take a tour at Long Pook yourself. Spend about an hour and a half. You can get half the town done if, by doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seacrest. Any other comments? I'll bring it back to the council. What uh, what is the the, uh, the wishes of the council with respect to the item before us, Ms. Rouge? Yeah, I I do agree with um. I want to say Council Member Homdahl, Mr. Homdahl, um, about the timing of the weed abatement and our ordinance, and and I would like uh, uh, staff to look into. Um, changing uh, what it what it says I don't have that memorized right now but um, to start earlier in the year but the problem with that is you start earlier in the year and then the weeds are going to grow again so you know we may have to go through this a couple of times to uh, make sure all these weeds are down and yes Mr. Seacrest I have taken tours around town and you were going to call me up about that <laughs> Mr. Durham. Well, I too, um, you know, I agree with pretty much all the comments that were made by, by all three. Um, I agree that we need a more central person, contact person, agency, rather than having two, three, or four involved, depending on where the location is. It's still within the city limits. Um, uh, it, it just cuts down the delays if we have one contact person, you know, or agency to take care of that situation. Um, and, I, and again, I think the fire department's doing a great job. Um, and Mr. Seacrest had me worried for a moment there. I, I tried to drive the city in an hour and a half, and I had to go code three to do that. Um, of course, I was taking photographs in between and everything. But you're absolutely right. There are a lot of homes here in town that that have definitely failed in neighborhood maintenance. Um, but um, I, I agree that um, we should have a, you know, look into having a central one agency handle the weed abatement. Mr. Lingle. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Um, just for clarification, what we're doing this evening is only concerning commercial properties. We're not even touching the residential properties, which is as big of a problem. And this is what we're talking about, possibly bringing these different agent or different groups together, that one agency or one group of people will handle both the residential and the commercial. So tonight we're just talking about commercial. Um, I, I agree with uh, Mr. Humdahl that we need to not only start earlier, but I think we need to do this almost on a regular basis, probably instead of once a year looking at it, how long do these do the weeds take to grow? If they take uh, two or three months to get out of hand, maybe we do it on a quarterly basis, but we should not let the weeds and the uh, properties get to look like they are right now and then go after them. So I'd like to see staff look at the um, ordinance and go after something that we keep the commercial properties and the residential properties that they are not nuisances that we have to get to this point. I agree with Mr. Uh, Lawrence that 
controlling weed should not be something that's brought before the city council. It should be done on a regular basis. We have an ordinance. If they get to be 12, 12 inches tall, 18 inches tall, whatever it is, we either have the property owners abate them or we go in and abate them. So I'd like to see the staff look on some ordinance like that. That being said, I will make a motion to accept staff recommendations um, with the caveat that I would like to see the um, special fees and assessments um, on the properties that did not comply by the mentioned date of May 28th. Um, I want people to realize that we are serious about code enforcement right now. We are proud of our city and we want to keep it looking clean. So even though they've abated it now at the very last minute, they did not comply with our letter asking them for May 28th. So I'd like to see those fees addressed. So that is my motion. We have a motion on the floor, Mr. Durham. I second the proposal in uh, Councilman Lingle's promo or, um, proposal. Uh, I, I agree that once a year isn't, isn't adequate. Um, let, me, let me make a suggestion. We've formed a code enforcement team. We have a list of about uh, 300 houses in town that are not just weeds. Some of them are, uh, are overgrown with weeds. Some of them are boarded up, broken windows. Some of them are uh, other problems in the, in the residential neighborhoods. And the code enforcement team is trying to, uh, to put together a package to, to take the worst uh, of these first and then, and then deal with them. And, and let's let them deal with the issue and come come before us. Uh, we we don't have the resources to go after all of them. Well, three hundred. Uh, when I saw the list, there were there were three hundred and sixty, I, I believe, uh, uh, different locations in Lompoc that we have sent letters and we have sent follow up letters. Uh, we've taken action against two or three of the worst. There are some that are just as bad that we'll we'll have to move on uh, quickly. But maybe we'll, if, if you could refer that, that, that issue to the code enforcement team and, and see what their recommendations would be to accelerate the, the weed clearance. None of the ones we're dealing with tonight are residences. And it's my understanding that we have to go after the residences uh, as uh, code violations rather than as safety uh, violations, or it's much easier to go after them as code, which is the reason for the different departments. Uh, the code is the planning department. So uh, maybe we could get the next time we hear from the, the code enforcement team and the plan on the year, we could have this issue um, brought up and, and looked at with, with some recommendations rather than take it by itself. Mr. Mayor, if that, I'm sorry, Ms. No, um If that is a staff recommendation that they come back with, you know, we can discuss that. But I just want the public to know that we are serious about this. So. Whatever we can come up with that we become more aggressive with this issue. If it's the code enforcement team, that's what the staff recommends, then we can discuss that and I will, I'll go along with that. Um, I was going to ask one thing and that, that is that we keep in a central place, maybe in the, uh, in the council chambers, uh, the list of the active cases right now because I get calls and I'm sure all of you do too. What are you doing about this house where you can see the, the, the weeds above the seven foot, eight foot high above the back fence? Uh, I've gone in and looked and that is on the list and we've already sent the property owner uh, a first notice and a second notice and it's up to the code enforcement team now to go out and follow up and, and, and enforce it. But it's already on our list and something is being done. So uh, if, I, I, if it's okay with Ms. Barcelona, I'd like to see that we all have access to that list so when we receive the complaints, we can, we can look and see if, if it's something that needs to be added. We, we do have a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. Yeah, Ruzay. I was just going to say there's a motion on the floor for the, with the agenda. It's in the agenda to adopt this resolution, and that's the rest of the stuff is suggestions, right? We do have a motion on the floor uh, with the staff rec to approve the staff recommendations. Uh, let's vote on the item. And again, that passes 401. The staff recommendations. Uh, let's vote on the item. And again, the next item is another uh, um, public hearing. It's the adoption of the GAN appropriation limitation. Um, 
Ms. Barcelona, we call up, uh, is that Brad Wilkie? Yes, Mayor and Council Management Services Director Brad Wilkie will report on the adoption of the 2010-2011 GAN appropriation limitation. Thank you. Honorable Mayor, Council Members, I'm Brad Wilkie, Management Services Director. I'm here to present the staff report on the annual public hearing on what is commonly known as a GAN limit. Uh, some background. In 1979 and again in 1990, voters passed propositions requiring calculations of annual appropriation limits. This, uh, this initiative also required that jurisdictions hold public hearings, and that's why we here, are here tonight. The calculation is a regulatory item in nature and is based on a formula that was approved by the voters in Prop 111 from 1990. The formula includes two basic factors. One is the growth factor in the California per capita income, and the second one is the annual percentage change in population. Um, this year we actually had a negative growth, negative in the California per capita income of 2.54 percent. And that's statewide, that's not just for Lampa, but that's the statewide number which is used uniformly by all jurisdictions that are subject to this. For the city of Lompoc, our population gain this year was 1.11%, which exceeded the county number, so we've chosen to use the city growth factor for population in this calculation. Using those two numbers, the city of Lompoc's calculated preparation limit for 2010-2011 is about $30,600,000. Um, the appropriations as subject to this is only about $13,400,000. The difference is approximately $17 million. What this means is that the calculated limit is higher than available taxes by a significant amount. Um, the city's budget is effectively the controlling constraint on city expenditures since those are significantly less than what the appropriation limits are. And there's a reason for this. There's a, this is due entirely, not entirely, almost entirely by the diversion of property taxes by the state through the EGRAF um, augmentation fund that has been taking funds from the city, from all the jurisdictions for at least the last 10 years. And that number is approximately $10 million. So that's a significant reason why we're here. Uh, as I s stated earlier, one of the requirements of the proposition is a public hearing uh, in all other aspects, this, this is a very common, very routine process, and um, being that much below the limit um, makes this more of a process that we have to go through, as well as the state. A lot of the costs involved in getting these numbers, the California per capita number specifically is a Department of Finance function, which probably could be used more productively for other activities. And that's the um, end of my report. Thank you, Mr. Wilkie. Any questions or comments at, uh, at this time? Uh, let me open it up for public comment. Anyone from the public would like to speak? To close public comment, bring it back. I'm going to make a comment. There's a lot of things that seem very noble when we first initiate them. Back in 79, and uh, again in 1990, initiatives put on the ballot by the people said that we're going to control how much the government can spend. And here's a reasonable formula, and this is the limit as to what the city can spend. Applying that formula, our limit is $30 million. We're spending less than 15. It's almost a meaningless exercise, but it's written into the Constitution by an initiative, so we'll go through the public hearing. We'll go through the, the, the uh, uh, we'll submit the, the facts and figures to the state and as much money as they need to run the state, they have people in the finance department that will pour over these reports from each city to make sure they're complying. To me, it's just like these announcements that we see every time we turn around warning the materials in this facility might cause cancer. Or, you know, it, it was a great idea when we first put them up, but we slap it on everything 
with a, with a, to protect ourselves with a, with the warning, and they become meaningless. Uh, it would really be nice to be close to that thirty million dollar figure, but uh, the action tonight is. Uh, what are the wishes of council with the item before us? Shall we limit our spending to thirty million dollars a year? Sure. sure. I'll, I'll move the staff recommendation. <laughs> I'll second the motion. We have a motion. We have a second. Those in favor, let's vote. Those opposed. And that passes unanimously. New business. Ms. Barcelona, we introduce the Mr. Mayor and Council, Electric Utility Manager Marty Hostler, <laughs> sorry Marty, uh, will be presenting staff report on meter reading network equipment sole source contract not to exceed 138,500. Mr. Hostler. Hi, thank Good you. Evening. Good evening, Council members. My name is Marty Hostler. I'm the Electric Utility Division Manager for the City of Lompoc. Today I request that you approve the award of a sole source contract with McAvoy and Markham Engineering and Sales for the purchase of meter reading fixed network equipment for the amount not to exceed $138,500. And I request that you authorize the purchasing and materials manager to issue a purchase order for this amount. The electric utilities and water utilities have upgraded over 50% of our meters and they're now 50% of them are capable of being read via a wireless network. We're now in a position to start employing the installation of fixed meter networking equipment in order to facilitate the use of meter reading through our broadband system. The advantages of using the fixed network system are that we can obtain on-demand metering, positive power outage indication, leak detection in the water system, uh, interval usage, which is uh, basically time of use metering, which will facilitate future um, rate restructuring if we do decide to use that, and also metering tampering and indication. Uh, the use of this will be, will be using the broadband system uh, to obtain the new meter reads for the existing meters that we have installed. We'll still need to, until we get new meters, in, the rest of the meters installed, we're still gonna need to use our meter reading crews um, to read those meters. There's no way around doing that. And at this time, I'd like to solicit any questions that you may have, and I'd like to call up my uh, substation supervisor, Ben Falez, and Mr. Stassi to assist in any staffing or uh, technical questions. Uh, Mr. Lingle. Thank you. A uh, couple comments. First of all, if you've been following me at all, I'm really against sole, so, sole source contracts. Okay. Now, I understand by the uh, report here that um, this is the only known source of this equipment. I guess my question is, have we really exhausted all efforts to look for other sources to get additional bids, or is this the only bid we could get on this? This is the only bid that we could get on this because this is ITRON's local rep, and ITRON will only allow us to deal with the local rep. Otherwise, we'd have to take our existing meters and we'd have to put in different meters in order to make it compatible with our broadband system and our existing um, metering, meter reading equipment. Okay, and now I think I will know the answer to this, but I want to ask it anyway. Okay. Did we look at that alternative and the cost of replacing all of our meters? Uh, I don't know if our purchasing manager did or not. Our purchasing manager is the one that informed me that he would rather go with a sole source contract instead of um, going out and changing, doing new estimates for new equipment because it was going to be to change all the meters out that we've already put in is going to be in excess of about $1.6 million. Okay. Yeah. I'm assuming that is what it was, but I, maybe in the future if we could have some information on 
there's like that $1.6 million was not in this report. Uh -huh. So maybe something, the reason why we have not looked at replacing or looking at other um, contractors replacing the meter is it would be an additional one, $1. right. $1.6 million. I mean, Correct. Um, because I just hate, I don't hate it, but I feel uncomfortable going with a sole source on a contract like that. I think maybe a comment here. I'm Ben Felice, uh, substation supervisor. I'm in charge of the metering, and I've been in part of this project since it started. Um, we actually started this project, well, not this project, but this metering technology seven, eight years ago. In, in, in the initiation of this project, we didn't intend on a fixed network, and then along came broadband, and we just want to take advantage of that technology, um, offer more services to our customers, our city. So I think that we were locked in. We had already started utilizing these particular meters, and it, we just didn't want to strand those assets by replacing all those new meters again. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The technology has is, is evolved over the last seven years. I mean, there's new technology. You hear it all the time, the buzzwords, AMI, AMR. This is an AMR system. It's very simple. Um, this network equipment is going to get coupled to our existing broadband system. It has the capabilities to be upgraded later if for some reason the broadband system was not, did not no longer become existent or whatever, but I mean, it, uh, it's, it's very robust stuff. It's being used in the city of Tucson in Arizona. It's being used at the uh, um, Camp Pendleton uh, Marine Base in Southern California, um, both utilizing a Wi-Fi network. So I think that, at the, and the question that you asked earlier, and, and I'm, I'm going to try to answer this for Marty too, because Marty just, we kind of just threw all this on him when he started here a few months ago. So, um, it is proprietary technology for ITRON. Um, there are other meter manufacturers that will offer the radio in their meter, but as far as the collection equipment, that's kind of like you're buying a Motorola radio versus a, another brand of radio. But we, can, we, could, we could put out a bid. But the, ones that's going to, the one that's going to get the credit for the, for the sale of that is going to be this, their representative in Southern California. We could have bought them from ITRON directly. The, the, the representative in Southern California still would have got the, the credit, and it would have been the same cost. I, I went through that exercise with our purchasing department, and they were the ones that recommended that we go with the sole source and save them staff time. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one of the last questions. Um, with the... Meter reading now being done by Wi-Fi, some of it, and in the future more. Do, will we see a reduction in staffing? Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. I think I should uh, address that because Marty wasn't with us when we did the budget. And at that time, we took into account that we would be transitioning to the automatic meter reading, and we reduced our meter reading staff from six readers to four with continually looking at plans to reduce further. Uh, at that time, we reduced the staff. We reduced it by two, but we only netted a uh, loss of one full-time personnel because uh, one of our plans at the same time was to add a meter technician to the water system because the change out of water meters is much slower than electric meters. So at the same time, we took advantage of the direction that we couldn't add additional staff to, in effect, adjust staff to greater meet our mission. So what we ended up doing was reducing our staff by two uh, meter reading personnel, a, a lead semi-supervisor and a, a reader for um, purposes of describing their duties, and uh, support secretarial OSA, as we call them, Office Support and, uh, Administration folk. And we added two new people. So we took three people out of the budget, put two new in to greater meet our mission. So the one that we put in in water, as I mentioned, is doing now the meter change out for us. The one we put in the electric system, we put in um, Ben's group, and he's doing this type of work for us to kind of coordinate the technical end of the meter reading with the uh, manufactured products and the Wi-Fi system. So 
a long way of saying we reduce staff by one through the budget process moving in the direction of automatic metering and we're continuing to look at further reductions as we get closer. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Durham? Uh, Mr. Stassi, that, that was a question I was going to ask. Uh, to begin with, how much longer do you think it will take before we have the other 50 percent completed? Our expert is right behind me. Uh, in the electric side, I, I really can't speak for water. I know that they are definitely moving along a lot quicker than they were. Um, our goal is to have all the residential meters converted by June of next year. Um, and we are on to, I mean, our, our, my guys are doing a great job getting those done, having to deal with, you know, I have guys that have a lot of time on their hands, um, or time off on their hands right now. So they, um, we get in what we can. We try to do about 300 meters a month. Um, we have obstacles as far as getting into access to them, but we're on schedule to get them done. We have about 3,500 more to go. Um, water, I believe, has about 7,000 more to go, um, but they have picked up the pace, so I, I don't think anybody's here from water to answer that. But Now, water, unless water and electrical are together, how, how do you do the reading? In other words, if you only have, if you still, if water still has 7,000 homes, Right. The manual readings, as, as Mr. Hustler said, the manual reading is going to have to be maintained okay. until the water is complete. However, there's going to be fewer of those to do, so, so that staff time will be reduced as far as the number of reads they'll have to do. Um, it, I think through transitions, you know, over time and through attrition, you'll, you'll see reductions in staff there, but, I, I, you know, th that's a shot in the dark right now. I, I believe the water would like to get theirs completed in the next five years. I think that's their goal. I think that we could, you know, we, we haven't addressed the, uh, uh, the commercial electric meters at this time, so there's going to be meters to be read there as well. Though that's a small percentage, we're primarily a residential community, so we don't have a lot of commercial meters. Um, I think it's less than 10 percent. So um, until we get there, um, I, I do have a plan for that. I, I would like to do that. I'm not sure that, you know, it'll be in the budget <laughs> next year. We'll have to wait and see. But, um, I mean, that's a different, it's a different, uh, it's a different cat to skin. So, but. Thank you. Um, my comments till after public, uh, public comment period. Are there, uh, we'll open public uh, comment period at this time. Does anybody has, uh, any advice or comments for the city council? Seeing no one rise, we'll bring it back here. I, I have one one comment. I uh, to to staff. Uh, we get our agenda packets a week ahead of time, and uh, when I saw the agenda packet uh, last week, I knew that the issue would come up because there's certain buzzwords that are going to trigger. Uh, response and one of them is sole source contract. Uh, I think it's a, um, uh, I think it was a little misleading to, to say that because we chose the basic technology when we went into Wi Fi competitively. We chose the type of meters that we were going to install competitively in the past so that they could work together. Uh, now we're buying an additional a follow on to the technology that's already been uh, already been chosen competitively uh, uh, and uh, uh, it, it's, it's limited if, 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 if we chose a stereo system that was using uh, um, cassettes versus eight track or, or uh, CDs, uh, we would necessarily have to go sole source to buy the cassettes. Uh, or, or we'd be very limited in the competition in being able to, to buy the cassettes. So we, we chose a technology uh, competitively that is compatible with our Wi-Fi system, and uh, this is a, the next step on it. And, and I'm, I might, uh, I, I probably should have come in and, and commented, uh, asked for an addendum to the uh, staff report, because I knew the minute I saw those words, it's going to trigger sole source, sole source. And I don't think that 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 it's it's um, <coughs> particularly accurate um, because of the the history of the project. So, uh, what are the wishes of the council, Mr. Durham? Well, the one thing that I I really like about the report is that it says that we have the funds that are available in the account. So I make the motion that we accept uh, the proposal made by staff. 
I second. We have a motion and second before us. Let's cast our votes. Again, 401. Next item on the agenda is um, discussion of the election. Ms. Barcelona. Mr. Mayor and Council, City Clerk Donna Taronis will report on the notice of general municipal election on November 2nd, 2010, request to Board of Supervisors to consolidate the election and adoption of the City Council policy requiring deposits for candidate statements. Mayor, Council, the terms for Mayor Siminski and Council Members Roger and Durham expire this year. The consolidated general municipal election will be held in the City of Lompoc on November 2nd, 2010. For many years, the city has engaged the services of the County Elections Department to conduct a consolidated election for the mayor and members of the City Council. Resolutions numbers 5648, parentheses 10, 5649, parentheses 10, pertain to the notice of the election and request the county services for conducting the election. The City Council approved a budget of 14000 for the 2010 election. There are 14,599 registered voters in Lompoc as of May 17, 2010. County staff estimates the cost range for the November 2010 election to be between 14,000 and 20,000. As noted on the attached election calendar in the staff report, the filing period for nomination papers and candidate statements is Monday, July 12th through Friday, August 6, 2010. If an incumbent does not file for re-election, the filing period for that office will be extended to Wednesday, August 11, 2010. Staff's recommendation that the City Council adopt the following resolutions pertaining to the November 2, 2010 election for mayor and two council members. Adopt resolution 5648, parentheses 10, calling and giving notice of the holding of a general municipal election on Tuesday, November 2, 2010 for the election of mayor and two council members. Adopt Resolution 5649, parentheses 10, requesting the Board of Supervisors of the County of Santa Barbara to consolidate a general municipal election of the city to be held on November 2, 2010, with services to be provided by the county. And adopt Resolution Number 5650, parentheses 10, adopting regulations for candidates for elective office, pertaining to and cost of candidate statements for the consolidated general municipal election. Approval of resolution number 5649, parentheses 10, will require each candidate filing a candidate statement, pay a deposit, and retain the 200 word limit on candidate statements of qualifications. That concludes my report, and I'm available for any questions. Any questions of the city clerk? Mr. Lingle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Donna, have we ever considered, I know several cities do write in only ballots. And the reasons they do that were mainly financial. This saves the city money. Have we ever looked at that or considered it here in the city of Lompoc? Um, we have not, but that's something we can look into if you want us to. Okay. Well, I'm not asking you to right now, but it, maybe we can talk about that later. Mm -hmm. But we have, no, we have not at this point. No, not at this point. Okay. Um, okay, then I don't know if it would be appropriate, but I'd, can we address Mr. Lawrence's concern about the mayor's term only being two years and I believe that was voted on by the city at one point that that would be something that would have to go to the vote of the people right it would have to go to, so it's right. not something that the city council can no. just address it would have to have an election yes and address that at that point so yes. okay thank you mm -hmm. Mr. Jane. then I have a question how does it get on the ballot then to the it's something that the council would have to decide. So the council would decide yeah, to put it on the ballot. Yeah, they want to put that on, right. Okay. Thank you. Seeing no more comments or questions up here, let me, let me open it up to the audience. If there's any questions, uh, oral communications or public comment at this time. Seeing no one rise, we'll uh, bring it back to the council. Let me uh, give a couple of a couple of my thoughts. Uh, um, those cities that are using mail ballot only now are the ones that have 
the full responsibility for the election themselves. Uh, Santa Barbara, for instance, chooses to have their city election in the spring of an odd-numbered year uh, when no one else is on the ballot. Uh, so they would bear the full cost of the, of, of the election, and, and it might be appropriate for them to go to, to mail ballot. When we combine with the county in a general election, um, we're paying a very small cost of the overall election uh, because there's, uh, there's, there's a race for governor, there's a race for, for uh, a senator, as we know this year. There's going to be another number of state initiatives, uh, some places county supervisors, uh, and, and so forth. So um, it would, the costs would be considerably more than they are char charging us uh, to go into a, a consolidated election. Uh, in 1988 is when the people of the California uh, the, of Lompoc voted to make the mayor a separately elected office. Prior to that time, uh, we elected five council members, and each year it was rotated. The mayor's position was rotated. Um, personally, I <laughs> I prefer that approach because it, it 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 keeps us from having a person thinking that they're a super council member. Uh, and and it, I, I think it fosters a lot more teamwork, but the people voted for it, and there were a lot of studies at that time, and the people that uh, were all surveyed before it went on the ballot said they wanted their mayor, if the mayor was going to be the head, they wanted him to have to be announced, uh, accountable to the people every two years. So uh, it would, uh, I would have to see a lot of input from the community wanting to do this before I would, it, it, it costs us money to put it on the ballot. It would cost us a lot of money to put it on the ballot. And uh, I'd have to see a, a lot of input from the community saying they wanted to change it to every four years uh, be before I would vote to spend that money. I'd, I'd, I'd have, to, have to believe uh, that. I'm, but I understand what you're saying. It is difficult for, for the person to, to have to run every two years. It's awkward in a number of other ways. Um, let me... What are the wishes of the council on the item? Before I'd like to make a comment. I, I um, agree with Mr. Lawrence, and I would like to um, agendize a discussion on um, the possibility of changing um, terms of office or uh, we elect five council people and take turns being mayor uh, for a year. A lot of cities do that. And um, anyway, I would like to agendize um, a discussion on changing uh, the terms of office. Yep. I make a suggestion. Uh, agendize it for the new council after the first of uh, the year. Uh, we can't get it on the November ballot in any case now. It's too, I know, it's but I would like to have. Let it be, let I, it I didn't say issue. that. I would let just let it become an issue. Let it become a, an issue. You're, you're interrupting me now. Uh, let it become an issue uh, uh, in the election. If people want to campaign on that on that matter, it could be a, the, the 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 way it's discussed in the community, and then and then bring it back at that time. I I, I don't I wouldn't favor putting it on the agenda right now. Uh, we're two years off before the next election that it would be. Well, I think it's going to take us two years for people to discuss it and think about it and. Uh, change it or, or you know and have you wanted to hear from the community and I think if we could get this the discussion started um, I think it would be a good idea so okay. I need two other people to agree with me to put it on the agenda but okay, we have a, a recommendation for this item to go on the agenda which apparently fails we have a motion before us with three resolutions can we uh, uh, what are the wishes of the council on the on the? We don't have a motion. We have a, an agenda item. I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept staff recommendations. Moved. Seconded. I'll second it. <clears throat> Let's cast our votes. Did we? I thought we had. We did. We did have public comment period. Tony. And that uh, motion for the three resolution passes. Next item on the agenda is the redevelopment agency's budget for fiscal year 2010-2011.
Ms. Barcelona. Mr. Mayor and Council, Executive uh, Redevelopment and Programs Coordinator Linda Wortman will present the adoption of the annual budget. Thank you, Ms. Wortman. Good evening, Honorable Chair and Board Members. The Redevelopment Agency's activities this past year focused on committing housing set aside funds to housing projects in the project area, working with finance on the agency revenue bond, processing payments and tracking agency costs for community center development and dehumidification and rehab projects, completing minor rehab work on the existing storage building located across from Fire Station 1, along with pre-development work on the demolition of the dilapidated housing structure, which we anticipate will be torn down within the next couple weeks. Housing accomplishments for 2009-10, the home base on G Street affordable housing project located at 513 North G Street was completed this year. The agency has restricted 19 of the 39 units in the complex, four of which will be restricted at extremely low and the remaining 15 restricted at very low income. Construction began on this project in the fall of 2008 and was completed in May 2010. The agency loaned 800,000 in Chaffa Help One funds and 250,000 in set-aside funds to this project. The developer has repaid the Chaffa One $800,000 loan on June 4th, 2010, which allowed for an early repayment of the agency's million dollar Chaffa loan funds on June 8th, this, with the cost savings to the agency of $5,000 for the early repayment. The, the 250,000 set aside loan is permanent financing and will be amortized over the next 15 years. Funding was allocated to two housing projects and a foreclosure housing program in fiscal 0910, which is the agency's largest contribution to affordable housing to date. The 2009-10, the agency allocated 1.3 million in combined funding to Pacific West Communities for the Cypress Court project located at 1410 East Ocean Avenue. The agency also approved 350000 in funding to NEO Consulting, doing business as Affordable Housing Solutions Group for 350000 to fund a foreclosure and rehab program which purchases foreclosed homes, rehabilitates them, and then sells them to lower income households. Page. Uh, the third project is funding to the Housing Authority and was uh, funded at $1.175 million. And that project will be located on West Ocean Avenue. Uh, several business owners and property owners met with the agency staff to inquire about redevelopment, commercial facade rehabilitation, and seismic retrofit programs. However, only one incomplete application was received utilizing these funding sources in the past year. The agency will review these programs in fiscal year 1011 and may request the board increase the grant portion of these programs to increase participation. The agency will be working with the applicant to complete his application so the South H Street property can be retrofitted utilizing agency assistance for the seismic retrofit. The agency plans to continue to support affordable housing projects and its commercial and residential programs that assist in the elimination of blight within the project area. Affordable housing finance can be risky especially for local agencies who many times are required to obligate funds to projects prior to other financing being committed. Although this financing is risky, we must continue to assist affordable housing projects and 
promote new and existing programs to attract a wider audience and achieve greater participation in our programs. In fiscal year 0910, the State of California assessed the California Redevelopment Agency statewide with a $1.7 billion budget payment known as the Supplemental Educational Revenue Augmentation Fund, CRAF transfer. The Lompoc Redeve Redevelopment Agency portion of this payment to the state was $963,079. The agency made this payment to the state in May of 2010. The California Redevelopment Association has taken legal action to appeal this taking from the state. However, it is estimated that the appeal will take at least two years. The state has assessed the agency with another shift of over 198,000 for fiscal year 1011, which will be required to be paid in May 2011. The agency proposes to fund the following projects and programs utilizing bond proceeds and tax increment for 2010-11. Uh, Bond proceeds will fund the Senior Community Center in the amount of $4,670,000. Aquatic Center Dehumidification and Rehab project, project will be funded at $1.8725 million. Civic Auditorium Rehab will be funded at $225,000. The Powell Program at $35,000. Charlotte's Web has been increased back up to 350,000. Seismic retrofit funding at 800,000. Facade improvement, 450,000. Downtown park at 20,000. Old Town projects, 650,000. Commercial rehab, 600,000. Blight removal operations, 41,000. Historic preservation and restoration of downtown, 810,000. The agency has made two dramatic shifts in its tax increment funding this year. The agency has shifted 750,000 in construction funding from the Old Town Theater to the Old Town Funds, such as the Seismic Retrofit Fund, Charlotte's Web, Children's Library, the Old Town Projects, and general funding for historic preservation and restoration of downtown. The funding for the theater has been allocated for the last three years with substantial progress, with no substantial progress made to move forward with the renovation. The owner of the property has put this project on hold for the last two years. It is important that the agency shows activity with tax increment funding. The state of California is searching for funds wherever they can and we do not want to give the perception that we are not actively utilizing our redevelopment funding. When the property owner is ready to move forward with the theater project, funding can be shifted back if available at that time. If the project were to move forward within the next three years, the agency could utilize a portion of the excess bond funding, which is estimated at approximately 900,000 to replace these funds. Funding could also shift from other Old Town projects at the desire of the board. The other shift of tax increment was from the downtown pocket park funding. The agency board, board voted not to allow the use of tax increment funding for the project during 2009-10. However, staff has earmarked 20,000 in the 2010-11 budget in the event the board chooses to use agency funding to offset city development fees for a new city volunteer built park. Total revenue in 2010-11 included bond proceeds, including bond proceeds, are estimated at approximately 16.7 million. Tax increment and bond funding for this year is budgeted at approximately $12.9 million, with housing set-aside funding budgeted at approximately $3.3 million. The agency is currently holding a large amount of set-aside funding. However, the majority of these funds have been obligated and are scheduled to be dispersed this year as projects complete their financing and pre-development stages. 
Fiscal year 1011 should be a very busy and productive year for the agency. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the board for their support, leadership, and commitment to revitalizing Lompoc and supporting redevelopment activities in our old town, as well as affordable housing projects in our community. Staff recommends the Redevelopment Agency Board adopt Resolution 10143, which adopts the fiscal year 1011 annual budget. This concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Wardenman. Are there any questions or comments uh, on the report we've received? Ms. Rouge. Um Thank you, Linda. Um, on page 16 of your re of the budget report under economic development marketing, marketing excuse me, um, you have um, $125,000 for economic development. Where, where is that listed in the on the final budget figures? What category does that come under? You're talking about the economic development marketing. Marketing. This this fifty thousand, the seventy five thousand, yeah. which, okay, under uh, professional services. In the main body of the pre in the budget. Okay. So in the administrative okay. area, and also the seventy five thousand is in the administrative area of the budget. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other comments or questions this time? Seeing none, we'll uh, thank Ms. Wortman. Stand by, if you will. We'll open this up for public comment. Are there any questions or comments from the public? Mayor and Council, um, my name is Susan Warnstrom. I'm president of the Lompoc Housing and Community Development Corporation and would like to comment this evening on the, um, rec or on the um, budget that has just been presented. Um, primary in our concerns is Lompoc Housing uh, was never contacted by staff um, while they were developing their ideas on what to do with the $750,000 of the theater money, so they are um, operating um, without current information. Um, we have uh, spent months working on the 2020 vision with uh, staff. Uh, we've been over here meeting at um, various times and just no comment at all on this, and it, it just uh, came as a huge surprise to us. Um, LHCDC feels that moving this money at this time uh, is risking the development of the theater. Our board is currently in some very serious discussions with a group of private financiers about investing with the th into the theater. Um, as you well know, currently investors across the country are lacking confidence and want more of a return on their money than the stock market and banks can provide. And um, they're, they're looking for a home for some of their money. This group has very deep pockets. It's a very positive opportunity for us. And they uh, may be the financing power for which we have been searching for several years. The elimination of the $750,000 theater fund blows a hole in this negotiation and single, uh, signals a lack of city support for the project. These investors came to us after the uh, article was printed in the Lompoc Record about the finances of Lompoc Housing several weeks ago. However, if these investors feel the city is uh, not interested or if they uh, have to listen to infighting and gossip and problems going on, uh, I'm concerned that they may feel that um, um, there are other opportunities with less hassle. This has to be a, an exciting and a fun opportunity for these people to put their money in here and work with us. And um, So I, I think we have one shot at getting together, working together, providing a, a united front. And it, my hope is that um, tonight you would pull this portion of it and allow LHCDC to talk to staff and to continue these negotiations with the financiers so that we um, 
can see what can come of it because this is a real offer. And the theater is the linchpin for the old town to, uh, redevelopment. Uh, when it is completed, 605 people will be walking into and out of the theater um, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday several times over. These visitors will be supporting all the other businesses in town, and the theater means value to the, uh, the Lompoc economy. It should be the first development in the process and not the last, and certainly not tossed out like yesterday's garbage. Lumpoke Housing and Community Development Corporation, like all agencies and governments, has faced tremendous pressures during this uh, economic downturn. Some of you may be aware that the Pasadena Playhouse was forced to close earlier this year and is now in bankruptcy, being reorganized under Chapter 13. In Los Angeles, related companies, one of the largest developers in the world, has had to postpone their Grand Avenue project originally planned to break ground in 2007 until 2013. Martin Farrell Homes has had to ask for an extension of the entitlements for Chestnut Crossing. And I have not seen Michael Tobes digging dirt at the Y. And yet, we're coming after our downtown revitalization. In all of these other situations that I just described, developers, property owners, lenders, and local government are working together to ensure that no permanent fallout results from the current struggles. And I want to know why this is not happening here in Lompoc. Mr. Warden, can, can we hold just a second? With, um, with the, the permission of the rest of the council, I'd like to uh, suspend the, um, the, the timing light because of the involvement of uh, LHCDC and, and, and directly involved in the theater project. Thank you. you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Lompoc Housing has access to Los Angeles developers or development experts and an agency and as an agency is a positive asset to the city um, and it should not be lightly discarded. Our community-based board wants to see the city prosper. No one member is interested in economic failure for, this, for the businesses and citizens of Lompoc. We are working hard to support the efforts of the city council, yet recently the council appears to have only an adver adversarial attitude towards the organization. We have developed nearly 240 affordable rental units. We are housing thousands of low-income children, assuring them of a safe and secure home in which to grow. We provide two emergency shelters, providing, uh, helping to prevent this, uh, the street sleeping situation found in Santa Barbara. And we have preserved the theater through incredibly hard times. Our tenants are a large part of the 20% unemployment suffered in this city. This unemployment number has remained high for more than a year, yet we are preserving households to protect the children and keeping families intact. These are not easy times, and it has been a very difficult struggle to keep the poorest in our community housed and cared for. We would certainly welcome meeting with the city and discussing the theater projects, um, and we would uh, strongly urge that you pull this tonight until there's an opportunity to have further discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll resume the use of the, uh, of the timer. Um. Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council, staff, I'm Alice Milligan, I live in Lompo, and I want to uh, support the request that uh, Ms. Warnstrom has put forward. I think we're all interested in the development of our downtown Lompo. I know all of us have worked hard and the theater is certainly the anchor of that um, particular project. And if there's even a little minuscule interest by a developer or investor in terms of theater, I think we ought to wait and take advantage of that. To remove the $750,000 from the theater budget would be very detrimental, as Ms. Mornstrom has indicated. Uh, certainly it would uh, put a damper on interest by a developer or an uh, investor. And I think waiting uh, another 60 to 90 days is certainly not going to present a problem. And uh, I certainly urge that you 
retain that $750,000 in the theater budget. In fact, I would request that the $900,000 that will be forthcoming in bond funds be added to that. That certainly would, if that's possible, certainly would make that uh, a more lucrative type budget, having the 900000 and the 750000 available for the development of the, budget of the theater. I know we all have worked hard collectively to make certain that that theater is renovated and it's going to be a real positive asset in Lompoc. Certainly if you look to San Luis Obispo in terms of what they've done with their old theater and what it's done for their downtown, I think we can duplicate that effort if we all work together. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Milligan. John Lynn, City of Lompoc. I agree with the, the prior speakers and I won't, won't reiterate what they said. As a, a downtown merchant, this project is vital to the downtown. I believe our project will give the downtown a jump start, but this is like steroids. This is the project that we need. Uh, I was very sad to see the staff report say no progress had been made to renovate the building because I know LHCDC has been involved in many different efforts to put a deal together and I think that's a poor choice of words. I was also sad to see that Charlotte's Web Library, which has been sitting still forever, no comment was made about moving those funds and in the search for funds for the theater, perhaps those funds should be considered as an alternative. Um, I was also sad to see that in all of the commercial sections, we had no commercial facade, we had no rehabilitation loans, we had no seismic retrofits, we had a project for the fire department, we have a project for the aquatic center, but from my personal perspective, the reason we have a redevelopment agency is to create jobs and taxes, both of which we need. We need taxes to support our city and we need jobs for the people who are unemployed here. And we have really failed as a redevelopment agency for whatever reason. And you know, redevelopment is very complex, but I certainly support the staff's outlook that we need to change what we're doing and make our redevelopment agency more effective to bring those jobs and assist those businesses. I was also sad to see that a mere $40,000 was put aside for the main project in, in a redevelopment agency, which is blight removal. Um, we have a building on J Street that because, or on, uh, I'm sorry, Laurel, that because of rezoning has become the poster child for blight. And we as an agency should be looking at buying that building and fixing it. Uh, we have a graffiti patchwork around town where graffiti has been, has been painted out with mismatched colors. There are any number of cities that have a great program for curing that and taking away that graffiti patchwork that depresses all of us. I mean, you drive by it and you see it and you, you don't think about it, but it's there. It eats at you. Uh, the city of industry has a great program. We should be using, utilizing some of our money for that to eliminate that graffiti patchwork and to assist the police department in doing a better job. The other day I was out painting somebody's fence with green paint because it got painted with brown paint to make the graffiti go away and they came out and they thanked me. Well, you know, it's not a great deal to put up a couple cans of paint. But how wonderful would it be if our city could go out and solve this problem, which is our blight problem. It is the, the real blight problem that we have that we see every day. So I hope the council will consider the public input and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Lynn. Dulcie Sin, um, Lompoc resident. I would just like to add my voice as well to uh, what I've heard the uh, three speakers say. Please, please don't take money away, don't take funds away, don't take support away from our theater project. Too many young people and too many of us older people have been looking forward to that going in. And I think now when we're tr finally seeing some turnaround in the economy, I truly believe that this hardworking group of uh, our local residents here that we're going to be able to put something together and to get that project moving. At this time to, to pull out um, and to tell the uh, other communities and, and investors that might be out there that we don't believe in this project would be a horrible thing at this time. So please, please keep that funding in there. Please let us find a way to work together with this organization and with our city staff and with our um, redevelopment agency here so that we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Singh. Does anyone else like to speak to the issue at this time?
Seeing no one rise, we'll close public comment period and bring it back to council. Uh, Ms. Wardman, can you come uh, come back up? I would like to point out that in the historic preservation restoration downtown funding, uh, where the theater funds were housed, there is $685,000 available uh, that if the theater project were to move forward, they could apply for those funds again uh, with an application and those monies could be allocated to the theater. All we need is an application. Also, in the Old Town projects, there's $500,000 that is budgeted for miscellaneous downtown projects. Those funds could also be accessed by the, uh, for theater funding. All we need is an application. And as far as the um, LHCDC's uh, new activity, um, the staff has not been advised of any of this activity, um, recent activity. Um, and as far as I know that in recent meetings, the council, the redevelopment board and council has requested theater updates from LHCDC and have not received any. So this information that is being stated here has never been um, reported to staff. Received. If, if you don't go ahead, mind let me uh, uh, let me see if I understand some of what uh, uh, what was presented earlier. Uh, the the redevelopment money is tagged with a year that it's available. Isn't that correct? And the money that's been committed for the theater project is really old money, because when we uh, allocated that money. To the theater, we had a schedule that showed that they would be far along in actual construction or ready to open by now, uh, <laughs> in, or way in the in the past. Um, I know that the city of Lompoc lost close to a million dollars this year because the state looks down, and if there's money that is two years, three years, four years old that's committed to a project and it's not spent, it's not actually uh, uh, being spent right now, it's vulnerable to be yanked away. I thought I heard you, you th that's what I got from the report that you gave us, and I thought I heard you say that should the money be needed, that, uh, that the money could be, could be allocated from new sources of funds at any time if, it, if it's needed. Are there things that we can do to show our support for the theater project without leaving the very vulnerable uh, old money there that is not being spent, which, uh, which, which the state government can come in and take away if it's not being spent. Uh, can, 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 we, uh, um, can we do some other things to show that that's available and to show investors that we support the project and that funds from the future will be, uh, it's the intent of the council to, to provide them. Um, I'll defer this with, uh, to Joe Pannoni, but I think that we could, as, uh, as a board, do some type of resolution of support for the theater, and then at the point at which LHCDC is ready to move forward with this project, they could give us an application and we would process it, utilizing our existing funds. But. It's... It's, it's not going to do you any good for us to leave the money allocated to this project if the state's going to come down and say you're not spending it, so we're going to take it away and we're going to move it up to Sacramento. You lose it, uh, you lose it anyway. Uh, and if, and if, if we can spend it, that, that's my understanding of the report that, that, that was, was given to us tonight. It's a funds preservation issue more than, uh, uh, more than any indication of lack of support of the theater project. So, uh, I just wanted to see if I understood that part of your, your, your report. Let's, let's uh, Mr. Lingle, you had your light on, and then Mr. Durham. Thank you. Um, I believe that by us pulling, or by, yeah, pulling this money out of out the support of LHCDC and the theater project would send a message to developers. It was indicated that, yes, the money may become vulnerable to the state, but I don't think it's going to become vulnerable in the next 60 to 90 days. I don't know if um, 
Ms. Warnstrom has an idea of possibly how much longer they'd need the support of the city, but I'd hate to see this money pulled or taken away from the theater project right now and send a message to the developers. This, as Ms. Warnstrom indicated or mentioned, that this is the linchpin. This is the center of our redevelopment, and we're looking at whatever we can do to uh, revitalize the downtown area. I'm, I'd just be against taking the $750,000 away from the theater at this time if there is any hope of getting uh, a developer in there. We've been waiting this long, and, you know, I hate to rub salt in wounds, but we've been waiting a long time for other projects in the city as well that have not come to fruition. So a little bit longer on the theater project, I don't think is asking a lot, especially if there is someone that they have. So I'm going to be, well, I'm going to be supporting leaving that money in there for the theater project. Thank you, Mr. Lingle. Uh, Mr. Dern? Well, I'm a little disappointed in the community. People have come up and they've talked about how, you know, staff has failed to support you. Uh, you know, the message is sent out that we don't support the theater. Uh, Ms. Um, Wortman, how many years has this loan been given? We initially, I think it was back in 2002, was the first loan to this project. And the redevelopment agency does have $700,000 invested in the uh, theater at this point, as well as CDBG money, with no return on our investment at this point. So that goes back to my statement. I don't know how the community can say that staff and RDA uh, department doesn't support the program. Um, the monies, um, and I've been following this in staff um, for some time now because it's come to my uh, attention from citizens in the community uh, talking about it, uh, about the theater. Um, the money's not being taken away, it's being reallocated so it can be used, there's still funding available for any and all projects concerning the theater. So, I mean, I agree with Councilman Lingle, Lingle that, that uh, you know, 60, 90 days isn't, uh, isn't a, you know, a big deal. Um, but I hope that when we come back, that the verbiage from the community is a little bit different than saying that staff doesn't support the project. Mr. Jay. Um Yeah, I had a question of our um, Mr. Pannoni. Is there a time limit on when we should uh, uh, approve this budget? Yes, <clears throat> yes, in order to have a budget, you need to have a budget approved by the July 1st. Otherwise, you don't have any existing budget to be able to operate under. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I tend to agree with um, Mr. Durham. As uh, Ms. Wortman said, we have invested um, over $700,000 in this project over the last um, nine years. Um, and it has gone on, and uh, Council Member Lingle didn't want to rub any salt in any wounds about some other projects, but uh, sometimes uh, government, as I s said and got quoted in the paper, runs very slowly. Um, Ms. Wirtman, you said that in two different funds, uh, the Historic Re Preservation and Restoration, there is six would be available $685,000, and then in the uh, Old Town Project Fund, 500000 That's over a million dollars that are av is available for this the theater project when there's an application. That's what you said, right? Correct. And the funds are available to the theater. They just need to apply. Right. But if another organization were to also be able to utilize those funds, for a project in Old Town, they would have the ability to use them also. Right. Um, so July, July. What did you say? July first, right? Well, this is our, this is the meeting. We don't have another meeting to approve this budget. 
So the idea of continuing this discussion is moot. Can we adopt something like the um, continuing resolution that the federal government issues or whatever, allowing the, the, the salaries and the continuing uh, O and M routine O and M costs to to uh, to, to uh, continue to be paid um, out of the the next year's budget, pending our, our resolution of the of the budget. Last year we didn't adopt the city budget until the 15th of July, so we so certainly the, the world's not going to come to an end if we don't adopt. We have a meeting on 2nd of July, is it? Fifth. Fifth. The 5th of July. Um, I. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see us uh, come back at that time uh, with an ad ad addressing the, the issues, uh, trying to make sure that we don't do something that's going to undermine the, uh, uh, the attempts of the uh, LHCDC to, to, to redo the theater. But uh, at the same time, I think the lack of communication has gone both ways. Um, if I may, through the chair, um, I would suggest that you get input from your financing folks um, in addition to the legal input, I think legally there's a mechanism you could use. Whether or not that works practically for the financing folks, I'm not sure. In addition to that concept, I could see a, a, an additional option or another option for you to, this evening would be to adopt the budget as is with a specific um, direction to staff to send a letter to the LHCDC indicating adoption of this budget doesn't change, uh, these are just words that are coming to the top of my head, the adoption of this budget doesn't mean that the agency is in any way pulling its support away from wanting to get the theater project done uh, and other comments like that that the, that the LHCDC could then use with their developer. One of the um, options, earlier were asking about certain options you have, another option is for the agency to enter into an exclusive negotiation agreement with the um, LHCDC so that the community knows that, not just the local community, but the development community knows that LHCDC really does have the support of the agency. To do that, we would need to know, I, I would suggest that we find out who it is that the um, developer is, the proposed developer, before that ENA was entered into, but there could be a three-party ENA. So there's many mechanisms if there was better communication among the team. Uh, let me ask Mr. Welke, is there, is, is there a problem meeting salaries or, or are the lights going to be turned off or, or, or anything if we wait till the 5th of July to approve a budget? The first payroll for 10-11 is paid on the 3rd. So if there's not a budget in place, the um, salaries that are paid from that could po possibly be delayed. The, um, the other way of doing it, I would think, would be, as was proposed, is to bring back a resolution on July 5th that says the agency is supportive of the that particular project and, and would be willing to consider that as part of the funding sources that are in the budget as we have have it stated. So. Let me ask Ms. Ms. Wordman and uh, uh, Ms. Belser if you have any, any comments or suggestions on what we we're talking about here. Uh, my recommendation would be for the agency to issue some type of resolution in support of the theater project and as I said previously, the funding is in our current budget. They just need to reapply for these funds. We had never received an actual application for these monies in any case. We had earmarked the monies, but there was, they were never actually applied for. So if we have a resolution, the money for the theater is still in this project. Um, I think that that should suffice, but my, the resolution could detail also, you know, that the money is available, we are in support of the theater, but uh, you might want to ask LHCDC if that would be acceptable, they think, to their, to help them with their new investor. And again, uh, staff has not heard this information previously, that there was this investor. 
before I uh, go to LHCDC. Is there uh, something, Mr. Durham? Well, again, I, I don't see... I, I, I agree with staff. I don't see the concern here. The money's not gone. It just has to be reapplied for. Uh, we're going to stop and request more work to be done by staff um, for this resolution um, and include not only RDA but also finance and whoever else gets involved. Um, the money's not gone. It's in the budget. It, they just have to reapply. I, I, honestly, I just don't understand the, the difficulty with that. Thank you, Mr. Lingle. The money is not gone, but I believe it will send a message of support. And maybe the uh, proclamation, the letter from the city, maybe do some, may do something for the developers, but I believe it will indicate a lack of support or a lack of confidence is maybe a better word for the project. I have a question for um, Ms. Wortman. Let's assume for a lack of for, for conversation, this budget is passed tonight. And tomorrow, LHCDC puts in a, a request, an application for $1 million, let's say. How long would that request take for that to be approved? Uh, when a, a complete application would be submitted. It would take uh, probably about a 40-day period to bring it back to the board to approve. Could be 30 to 45 days, mm -hmm. as long as the application was complete. Okay, thank you. Ms. Weinstrom, you've heard the discussion. Is there something you'd like to add? No. Could we consider taking uh, a new allocation out of the other money that she's talking about, the 900000 We take 750 out of some new money. We just somehow trade some. But um, I, th I think we need to know for a fact that it's not going to be a food fight when we come back to start developing the theater and that the money is there and, and that's what the council wants to do with the money and that we're not, you know, surprised after we've, we've uh, negotiated with our uh, investors and, and we've assured them the money's here and then we come back and they say, oh, well, sorry. Uh, we need to have some assurance that that money, some money is going to be there for us and that we don't um, end up losing this opportunity. Thank you. Thank well, you. I think a resolution it's a resolution. You resolve to do something. That's what a resolution is all about. Or if you think a letter, like uh, Mr. Panone, Panone, Panone suggested, uh, would would suffice. I think you know. I, I think the key word is um, you know that that we support the theater, and LHCDC has to do their part by coming forward with a uh, complete application when the time comes. Yeah. So it seems to me a resolution or a uh, letter of intent uh, signed by all of us in blood would <laughs> suffice and to give you confidence that uh, we do support the theater and we wouldn't pull the rug out. I don't know. Mr. Durham. Well, with all due respect, it's been eight, nine years, and the money's been there for eight or nine years. Um, so, you know, what I would like to see happen tonight is I would like to see council pass this uh, recommendation by staff. I would like to add that we do issue a, a proposal saying that we do support the theater. Obviously, we do. Um, and I, I just don't, I mean, if it's a 30 to 45 days, that's even less than what you requested initially was 60 to 90. So, I, again, I fall back with I, I don't see where we're failing to support the program. Mr. Lingle. Mr. Wilkie, can you address Ms. Warnstrom's um, question about 
reallocating new money to the project? Is that even a possibility? As part of the application process, that well, would be, be, be part a new of application it. then. Excuse me. It would be a new application for new Correct. money. Correct. And one thing I was going to add, uh, if somebody asked me, was um, I'll ask. <laughs> the um, the developer that's being talked about, um, we've heard about this developer, but be be, I'd be very happy to meet with LHCDC and the developer to talk to them about the finances of the agency and what is available, and that would provide some level of information to the developer beyond just what um, they understand the situation is now. And that contact might support the, um, the resolution of support that sounds like it is going to be coming at the next council meeting. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? The time is one of the wishes of the council on the item before us. Well, I make the recommendation that we accept staff's recommendations uh, and, and uh, adopt the resolution. Um, I don't know if this is appropriate, but I would still like to see something propose or something in writing from us saying that we do, in fact, support the um, the uh, theater. Uh, but I'm not sure just how to go about that. Is that is that your motion, sir? That's correct. We've closed public comment period now, Joseph. I, I second that. We have a motion on the floor and a second to approve the budget presented to us tonight. Um, let's, let's vote on that. It carries three to one. Uh, I would like, I would hope that the best communications, effective communications can be established. If there's anything that can be brought back, I would ask uh, whether it's a resolution indicating support. Uh, I'd ask staff to try to have it for our first meeting in, uh, uh, first meeting in July to, uh, to whatever gives the, the, whatever LHCDC thinks gives the, uh, the best vote of confidence to the short of, short of putting the money in a bag and handing it to them, uh, best vote of confidence on the project. I just would like to add that I have been advised that the agency staff, Arlene Pelster and Linda Wortman, will be on vacation the first meeting in July, so this will be on the second uh, meeting agenda okay. in July. Yeah, the 19th. If, okay, we can talk about that offline. The next item on the agenda is uh, the 2010-2011 uh, Human Services Funding Allocations. Ms. Barcelona, you want to introduce your staff member? Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, Community Development Program Manager Dinah Lockhart will present on the approval of fiscal year 2010-2011 Human Services Funding Allocations. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and members of City Council. Uh, I'm here this evening to present to you the recommendations of our Human Service Commission uh, for uh, human service funding for fiscal year 2010-11. Uh, I would like to point out a correction on page two, uh, typo, uh, page two, second paragraph. Um, it states on June 15th, that should actually read June 7th, that was the first Monday in June when the Commission met. Um, the recommendations before you this evening um, are that the City Council should uh, approve the fiscal year 2010-11 human service funding allocations to approve new human services funding award criteria and to authorize the City Administrator or her designee to sign memoranda of understanding with the human services agency, agencies to distribute these funds. Um, just briefly, uh, this year the city made available $172,367 in human service uh, funding to local nonprofit agencies. Um, this funding consists of uh, 
CDBG Urban Consortium Funds, uh, CDBG Program Income Funds. Um, we also receive uh, actual donations from our utility bill payers through their utility bill. Uh, we also receive a Comcast corporate donation of $25,000, which the Council has annually made available to our Human Service Fund. Um, also, I would like to highlight that we have two um, Lompoc citizens who uh, contributed $1,020, these two individuals, uh, for specific designation of funds. So um, all of those monies uh, are very carefully reviewed and allocated by our five-member Human Service Commissioner uh, Commission. Uh, we have one of our commissioners here this evening, um, Barbara Holt. Um, we received 27 applications, a total of $371,353 was requested from the city. Uh, the Commission conducted 30-minute interviews. Uh, the Commission has also done annual site visits. Each agency submitted a written application, so it's a very thorough process. Um, the Commission met on two different occasions to deliberate uh, on those uh, applications. Uh, attachment 1 includes a description of the applications and uh, their recommended awards. I did want to point out that we received a request of $5,000 from the Lompoc Firefighters Foundation uh, to purchase a computer server for the fire department. That request was carefully considered, and although the commission was favorably um, in support of the fire department receiving that equipment, they just felt that the fit between the request and the Human Service Commission just wasn't a good fit. Uh, but they did feel that it was uh, a worthwhile purchase. Um, on June 7th, I want to point out the Human Service Commission uh, did consider and unanimously approve, uh, with commis one commissioner absent, new Human Services funding award criteria for all Human Service contracts effective July 1. Uh, I believe the Commission was concerned that um, if certain contracts with the city were not in compliance, that the Human Service Commission would not just continue to award funds and there be inconsistency in how the city was administering its contracts to various uh, agencies in the community. Um, um, uh, in the event that an agency is out of compliance with a city contract, human services funding will be withheld until a compliance is achieved. Uh, the following is the funding award criteria which was approved by the Human Services Commission. Uh, and I do want to point out that uh, Commissioner Holt did speak with the commissioner who was absent that evening, and she is also in agreement with this uh, new policy. The policy reads uh, uh, as follows. All agencies which are entering into contracts with the city of Lompoc, whether financial or service-based, must be in compliance with all city of Lompoc conditions as outlined in the contract in order to qualify for city human services funding. An agency designated to receive funding but deemed non-compliant in any contract with the City of Lompoc will have said human services funding withheld until compliance is achieved, as determined by City staff. Compliance must be achieved no later than the third quarter of the City's fiscal year in which funding was awarded. Forfeiture of any funding by the end of the third quarter will be reallocated in the fourth quarter by the City Council based on recommendations by the Human Services Commission. We wanted to do this within the same fiscal year so that we would not lose the ability of using those funds. Uh, and as I pointed out earlier, we had at least a three to one request for funds compared to what was available. So there are many, many agencies who were turned away um, from what they had requested. In summary, staff is requesting that City Council approve the fiscal year 2010-2011 human service funding allocations and to authorize the city administer, administrator or her designee to sign memorandum of understanding with the human services agencies to distribute these funds. And that concludes my report. If you have any questions or comments, I'm here. I believe Barbara is still here as well. Thank you. Are there any uh, comments or questions at this time? Mr. Lingle? I just have a comment and it's Probably it's directed at Ms. Lockhart, but mainly uh, Ms. Holt and her commission. Um, 
I just want to thank you for the work that your commission does and Dinah, what the work you do with the commission. I'm sure I'm not the only one that has ever served on an allocations commission, but it's probably one of the toughest jobs you ever have is deciding who gets money and who doesn't get money. But I think they did a fantastic job distributing it, and I want to thank you and your commission. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should mention that this is all volunteer. So this is I'll all, do that. And all volunteer. Yeah. So Mr. Durham. Well, I, I agree with Councilman Lingle because I attended the uh, May 3rd, was it? meeting mm -hmm. um, and I saw how painstaking it was going through each and every item not just going into it but going over it um, history of it um, I mean the, the whole process so I applaud you and the volunteers uh, you do an excellent job Thank you. any other qu comments at this time we'll uh, we'll open this up for public comment are there any comments from the uh, from the audience on the the issue before us, Mr. Lynn. John Lynn, City of Lompoc. I'm probably the last person you would ever think would be able to uh, testify with some knowledge about human services, but I've spent a year on the County Human Services Commission and I now know an amazing amount compared to uh, what I knew a year ago. I, when I read the portion dealing with contract compliance, I did a little looking through and my my county human services stuff is thousands of pages and I can't tell you I read everything looking for this but I looked in depth for it and I did not find in the county that this requirement exists. Secondly, I recall from numerous meetings that LHCDC in particular, which would be the Marks House and the Bridge House, have been continuously listed as non-compliant with regard to various housing projects. And I recall Nick talking to me about those things and saying, well, you know, we had weeds at this one and we had graffiti at that one and we have this issue here and that issue there and all of those continue to come up and once a month or once a quarter when the facilities are looked at, there are always issues. So I think basically what we're saying here when we pass this is you might as well just take this money for the Bridge House and the Marks House out right now and allocate it to someone else because it's still going to be sitting there at the end of the year based on what's happened in the past. Now, I'm really not an advocate for that. Um, I've worked with both those facilities and gotten supplies and things for them when the opportunity came along and hauled stuff in that would help them. And of, of all the facilities that we have, those are for our, the people are at the end of the line. And I really, really can't see why we would do this over something so trivial. And I would simply ask you to remove that sentence. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Steve Green. I'm with Transitions Mental Health Association. And I wanted to thank the mayor, the city council, and Human Services Commission for the grant that they gave us this year. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Green. Mayor and council people, um, I'm Barbara Holt, part of the Human Service Commission, and I would like to address Mr. Lynn and what he had to say regarding removing the Bridge House and the Marks House. Noncompliance has nothing to do with the way the building looks or what goes on there. Or one time we found gopher holes out of the Bridge House where, because the kids couldn't play. That's not what we're talking about with noncompliance. We're talking about contracts within the city that they're to perform something, not what we go out on a site visit and find. And I think, you know, there isn't a one of us on there that wants to see anything happen to the homeless type of shelters that we have. And to accuse that kind of a thing, I think is in poor taste. I'm sorry. Ms. Holt. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. I'm Ashley Payne, the Executive Director of Community Partners in Caring, and thank you for having me over here, or letting me come to the meeting this evening in beautiful Lompoc. We have a wonderful program that helps about two, 250 to 300 seniors here in Lompoc, and we help those seniors about 2,500 to 3,000 times a year, and we help those seniors with about 30 to 35 volunteers. 
and we are appreciative tonight of the award that you've provided to us or that hopefully approve with the CDBG funds and all the other funds that Ms. Lockhart mentioned as well. And I have a um, couple brochures here if you'll take two of the pieces and pass them down. It tells you more about what we do as an agency in the area. And um, we help low moderate income seniors. We help eliminate blight in the area by providing yard work. We do transportation. We complement Colt here in town and the other um, Clean Air Express. We help people that aren't able to get on the bus, people that aren't able to drive themselves, and people that have no family members to take them. So we really provide a wonderful service to your city here. And I think um, Mrs. Rouget for her support and Mr. Durham for his support, city council members. They've provided us with funds from their um, agencies that they're a part of. And Mr. Durham has provided us with training to our volunteers at our annual volunteer training. And we have a fundraiser coming up where we support, um, where we raise support from the community as our local funds. The fundraiser's June 26th. It's next weekend. It's in at the south end of Santa Maria, but the funds do support our program in Lompoc. It's called the Clergy Waiters Night. We've been doing it for 10 years, and we'd love to have your support. And Ms. Lockhart was able to come last year, and we hope that you're able to support us this year. June 26th, Saturday evening at 5 o'clock. Where, where? At the Radisson. 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 Oh, sorry, forgot to mention that. Thank you again for your time and for all your volunteer efforts as well. Thank you, Ms. Payne. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, Joyce Howerton, Lompoc. I'm here on behalf of the North County Rape Crisis and Child Protection Center, and I, too, on behalf of the center, would like to thank you for the recommendation for allocation for this coming year. Um, we have a, an incredible group of st staff people at the center as well as volunteers that deal with all issues of rape, sexual assault, and child abuse. And it's just, it's a tremendous amount of work that gets done with people that are making, are way underpaid, working very long hours because they care about this community. And I'd also just like to take the opportunity to say that on behalf of all the nonprofits that you've, you've funded, you know, the city would not run without them. And so we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Howard. Is there uh, anyone else would like to speak? We'll close public comment period. We'll bring this to, back to the uh, uh, back to the city council. Uh, I remember the times ten years ago. I think Ms. Howerton remembers also when when we would deal with this issue and the agencies would each come forward urging that the amount allocated to them be increased at the expense of someone else. I think it's a real tribute to the the uh, professional approach of the Human Services Commission that uh, they, they uh, fairly assess the needs. Uh, they have requests three times as much money as they have to hand out, and uh, the agencies thank us for the money rather than complain they didn't get a bigger share. So, uh, Barbara, that uh, you and your commission deserve an awful lot of kudos for the, the hard work you go through and, and establishing a system that is res well, well respected. Um, Ms. Rouget. Yeah, I also wanted to add my, my thanks. It was, thank you for the thanks. <laughs> it's, it's nice once in a while to get thanked for what we do. Um, I know uh, the Human Services Commission works very hard to keep everything fair, and they work, I've been to a couple of their meetings too, and uh, the site visits and the time spent and the scheduling to make sure that uh, everything that they're doing is uh, in the right way. I just, it, it is, it's a very intensive commission and I appreciate everything they do. And uh, I wanted to thank Barbara also for all the time. She's been on the Human Services Commission for a long, long, long time. Um, anyway, it was, it was, it's nice and I know the Human Services Commission wishes there were more, was more money and you, they could give more money to all, all the agencies. And as Ms. Howerton said, this town couldn't run with all these agencies and all these volunteers. So um, I think this is a really wonderful program and I want to thank Ms. Lockhart for the time she puts in as staff support. So I, you know, I think it's a, a very successful program and um, thank you all. Mr. Legal. 
I'd like to make a motion to accept staff recommendations. I second that motion. And I, too, can't thank the volunteers enough in this community. We, we've had two committees here tonight represented, and they're all outstanding people. We have a motion before us. I'll speak to the motion. I don't favor any. I, I think it's entirely appropriate that we've established some accountability in here, and uh, and I don't favor deleting that uh, uh, that requirement from the recommendation. And that the motion was made to to accept the the, the recommendation, and and I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, we've got the item before us. Let's uh, cast our vote. And that one passes 401. Concludes most of the business. Written communications. Do we have any to announce? None. Oral communications. We'll allow two minutes uh, additional speakers. Someone wants to speak? Dulcie Sin. Um, I would like to, to go back to what we had talked about before. I uh, wanted to step up and say that when uh, Ms. Wortman announced that it was in 2002 that the first loan was made to LHCDC for the theater, that that was incorrect information. That was in 2006 when that first loan was made. And, and, uh, and to clear up some of the uh, concern about the sense that there's some adversarial relationship between staff and this organization out in the community. For over a year now, I've volunteered my time and I have given so much professional help to this organization to help them pull through these uh, very tough times. During that time, I have uh, made it a point to uh, speak with uh, staff members as well as with board members, with their board, and with individuals up here individually saying how important it was for us to work together. I went on a ride along with the RDA staff to visit all of our uh, low-income apartments and watch them take pictures of, of chalk graffiti on the uh, sidewalk that we were cited for. I uh, talked with them about the need to, to move forward and to have conversations. And yet, um, and I sat with, with uh, Ms. Barcelona as soon as there was a rumor that there might be some outside investors coming in. And at that time, I talked about the need in the personally to say, how do we work together? How do we not play the gotcha game all the time, where, you know, all of a sudden we find out about a staff report where this organization is listed and no one picked up the phone, no one wrote an email, no one texted me, no one made that effort to reach out. You know, and at that time I said we have some very important investors on the line here. Can't we work together now and show a united front and not show anything that would be adversarial? And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how else to heal that. I think that we're, we have to look forward and we have to move forward with this organization and the RDA agency and uh, within the community as well. Um, I have said before, and I'll say it again, this organization has reached out to um, uh, the Santa Barbara Venture Partners, and um, I'm sorry, and we've reached out to them, and we'll be going through a strategic planning process. We're looking at everything from our uh, leadership to how uh, we're working on projects to how we can bring about some workforce development in this community. And if you have uh, something that you want to, to tell me about what we're not doing. I, I don't know how to call more. I don't know how to make myself more available to individuals. I don't know how to ask more often that before it comes to a public meeting, before it is a staff report, before it is unchangeable, how we could possibly work on it as a team, as individuals who care deeply about this community and won't move forward on it. And that's all I have to say. I thought I had been clear and upfront. I thought I had given my phone number, my cell number, my email, my Twitter, my Facebook, my everything to somebody. And to have this come up and not know when it's happening is very, very disappointing. And I think that's adversarial. Thank you, Sid. Does anyone else like to comment at this time? Mayor of City Council, Joyce Howerton, um, I'd just like to take this opportunity to compliment your staff, both the human service staff and the redevelopment uh, staff. I think they do an excellent job. 
they really do their due diligence, and I think they've kept the city on the straight and narrow, and I just really want to take this opportunity to say that we, as a community, as taxpayers, appreciate the work that they're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Howard. Any other comments? Bring them none back. Uh, this is the last time that council uh, or redevelopment agency members comment until we go into closed session. Don't get anxious to go home. Mr. Durham. Well, I got the green light to go. Um, you know, a comment was made uh, by Mr. Lynn uh, earlier about, um, you know, we don't do enough in this community to uh, support graffiti or whatever. Well, if you're one of those people that feel that we don't do enough, I hope to see you and about 600 people on the 26th of, uh, I'm sorry, on the um, 10th of July, because from 8 o'clock until 2 o'clock, we're going to have a citywide graffiti removal and trash pickup. Now, I realize it's down the road, but maybe that's the biggest problem. We don't converse enough to let people know what's going on. Um, so July 10th, between 8 and 2, meet at Lompoc Police Department at 8 o'clock in the morning, and we'll give you a paintbrush and a trash bag. Any other comments at Just this time? I have one, one comment, one request to Tony staff. stole my thunder, so. No, he stole my thunder, so I'm done. We've got a police officer here. You want to file a theft report? Okay. The, uh, I have heard since we adopted the trash rates that uh, many people are concerned that there's going to be illegal dumping in the town. Uh, can we, if there is any indication of that, can we get a report, uh, and you may be included in your monthly, monthly uh, written report to us or something, that uh, if, it's, if it's picked up. No other comments, no other reason to continue to meet. We're going to adjourn this regular meeting and move back into recesses this meeting that's right we got to come back here and tell what we did in closed session and we're going to move Chief back in. Go, 